Hello students, we'll be looking at Elkin's in-class exercise 1 for revision purposes. Okay, so uh, for question 1, we are given this particular Elkin. The name is 2 methyl built 1 in. Okay, and then um, the electrophile is given to you to be HBr. So the first two reactions given here, or rather the, the reaction provided here uh, with a major and minor product given, uh, you should be able to see that it is some form of electrophilic addition reaction uh, going on. So although you're not asked to draw the mechanism, but you can kind of like uh, visualize it to be something along this line. So you have a HBr here with a dipole moment uh, with H taking on the partial positive charged. Uh, Br taking on the partial negative charged, and then um, the pi electron cloud is likely to attack the electron deficient hydrogen, and uh, in the process, HBr undergoes a hydrolytic cleavage towards Br, which will take on the negative charged. So in this case, the H can either go to uh, if we were to number the carbon. So let me do it in red. So um, let me just uh, number it as uh, 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5. Okay, so the H can either go to carbon 1 or carbon 2. So if we follow the same numbering over here, then we'll be getting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the one on the right hand side, the Br actually goes to carbon 2. So therefore, the H will go to carbon 1. Okay, and then um, for the bottom product, the Br actually goes to carbon 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So therefore, you would expect the H to go to carbon 2. Okay, so I'm just going to draw in a H for convenience. Of course, uh, you guys don't really need to draw in if you don't feel like doing so. So I'm going to color code again. This is the H we are talking about. And of course, uh, this is the Br being added um, into the carbocationic carbon. Okay, so the questions asking you, um, can you draw the carbocation uh, which gives you the particular product uh, reflected on the right hand side? So what you're going to do is, after understanding uh, how the whole uh, process goes, what you're going to do is you are just going to sketch out the unknown, okay, carbocations. So in this case, uh, carbon number 2 will take on the partial positive charge. If you wish to draw in a H, you can do that. Okay, and of course, we can follow the numbering as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing below. Um, 1, 2, 3, and then um, we're just going to put an H here. And then we do the same numbering. This will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then, of course, the positive charge will be at carbon number 1. Okay, so these are the two carbocation which we are going to draw. So the first uh, carbocation, uh, if you are able to see, is actually on carbon 2. So it's bonded to three alkyl groups. Okay, uh, the first carbon, of course, is carbon 5, 3, and 1. So these are the three alkyl groups it's bonded to. So therefore, you will designate the carbocation as tertiary. And then the, the other carbocation is bonded to only one alkyl group, uh, where the first atom is actually carbon number 2. So this will be primary. Okay, so this is uh, how you go about answering the question. And of course, the major product will come from the... The one with the tertiary carbocation because tertiary car carbocation is more stable than a primary carbocation. And as you learn from your lecture notes, the more LQ groups you have, LQ groups are actually electron donating in nature, it will help to stabilize the carbocation more. Okay, so the more R groups you have, uh, the more stabilized will be a carbocation. And therefore, my major product is expected to be. Uh, the one with the tertiary bromide and then the primary pro bromide will be the minor product. Okay, some of you are asking why alkyl groups are electron donating in nature. I think occasionally I have explained in class. So maybe I can uh, take this very short opportunity to just uh, give you a brief uh, idea why alkyl groups are electron donating in nature. So if you are going to sketch out a typical carbocation, let's Let's say we sketch out the tertiary carbocation over here. So the tertiary carbocation will look something like this. I will have a methyl group, a CH3, okay, projecting inwards. 
and then I will have another CH3 projecting out. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here is um, this will be a CH2, CH3. So uh, in the process, I'm, I'm just going to sketch out maybe a H over here and a CH3 over here. And then I will purposely sketch out the CH sigma bond, okay, uh, in purple, uh, that is formed between the sp3 hybrid orbital of the carbons and the 1s orbital of the hydrogens. Okay, I'm going to put in purple. Okay, so um, after I put in purple, I'm going to draw out the p orbital, okay, of the carbocation. So I'm going to put a positive charge next to it. Okay, so this is the empty p orbital. So I'm going to put MP here. Okay, and then of course the sp3 uh, ch sp3 1s sigma bond will be filled uh, filled with uh, two electrons. I purposely drew drew them in such a way that uh, you can see that the sp3 ch bond right is actually facing the empty p orbital yeah so because the cc bond is freely rotatable right so occasionally i'm going to have the sp3 1s sigma bond facing the empty p orbital and when they face each other there will be an induced inductive effect so this stabilization in chemistry we call it hyperconjugation Okay, so this is known as hyperconjugation. So this hyperconjugation is the origin of the electron donating effect of LQ groups. So the more LQ groups you have, the greater the probability of this uh, induced inductive effect by the CH bond onto the MDP orbital of the carbocation. So this actually helps to stabilize the carbocation. Okay, so I hope uh, it gives you a short glimpse on um, what exactly is happening. The next question we are going to look at is question two, where you have this particular alkene. So uh, it's named as 3-methyl-built-1-in. So we're going to number the carbons. Okay, so we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so we're going to follow the same numbering uh, for the products X, Y, and Z. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then uh, there's something which you're going to realize is a little bit familiar. 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so you notice that for compounds or products X and Y, right, they are quite similar to uh, what we have above. So basically the BR and the H is either added um, at carbon 1, 2 or carbon 2, 1. Okay, but carbon Z is a bit, I mean, product Z is a little bit special because um, the BR is neither added to 1 or 2, then um, it's added to 3, which um, comes as quite uh, unusual. Yeah, but we're going to uncover uh, why that's the case later on. Uh, but that's not so important for now. Okay, so I think the first thing we, we got to do is describe the mechanism for the reactions. Uh, okay, so basically you're supposed to draw the mechanism for electrophilic additions. Okay, so uh, yeah, so as usual, when you are drawing electrophilic addition, you're supposed to show all um, partial charges. And remember to write out the title. So electrophilic addition is very important. And then, of course, the dipole moments for HBr, delta plus, delta minus. And remember that uh, it's different from alkenes, where it's homolytic cleavage. Okay, so it's a full arrow representing electron pair movement. So we're going to have an electron pair from the pi bonds attacking at the electron deficient H and the HBr bond will break uh, heterolytically towards the Br. So the Br will take on the minus charge. And because we are generating the carbocations and this particular step generates unstable species, so uh, it will be the slow step, meaning it will be the rate determining step. Okay. So uh, usually what we normally do is we will generate two carbocation because in this case it's an asymmetrical alkene okay so you would expect perhaps to generate two carbocation that are uh, different from one another so we have a secondary carbocation on the left and a primary carbocation on the right so by inspection you realize that the secondary carbocation will give you y and the primary carbocation will give you x 
Okay, but in order to answer the question properly, because the question asks us to uh, describe the mechanism uh, between 3 methyl built one in with HBr to give compound Y, so we have to follow what the question wants. So we shouldn't be writing out both carbon carbocation, we should just delete one of them because it's not necessary. Remember, in exams, when you answer a question, uh, be explicit about it. So if the question asks you for something, you just... Uh, go for that something. Don't don't give things like this or this or this or this. Yeah, okay. Then um, from here, you know that I have a bromide, okay, which will be attracted via uh, uh, I mean they will be attracted because they have opposite charges. So this will be the first step. You will be attacking the carbocationic carbon. So this will be the first step. Okay. So uh, I'm going to draw the products for the first steps. Okay, so I'm going to end up with something like this, Br. Okay, so uh, essentially this is actually compound Y. Okay, so I'm going to write Y over here. Okay, so yeah, essentially uh, we, we are done with drawing the mechanism leading to Y. Okay, so the mechanism leading to X, uh, if you are being asked to draw, it will be basically this particular carbocation the primary carbocation uh, with the bromide going to represent in green okay attacking this H okay so I'm going to get X from here okay getting Z is a little bit hard it's a bit harder so I'm going to explain it in the next part yeah but of course the first uh, for part B you are, you are being asked whether compound Y will be optically active Okay, as per, the lect as per lecture, if you have seen um, the video on the lecture, in order to explain whether you'll be optically active, you have to show the three-dimensional or rather the trigonal planar geometry of the carbocation. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to show you the, the trigonal planar geometry. So we have a H over here, okay, projecting in, and then we have a CH3 projecting out. Okay, and then we have an isopropyl group, uh, CH, uh, CH3. Okay, so this is a carbocation. Okay, so you notice that in the electrophilic addition fast step, the bromides can approach from from can approach the trigonal planar carbocation from the top. Okay, and bottom plane of the carbocation with near equal probability. Okay, why I say it's near equal probability because uh. In this particular case, it will be almost, or you can safely say that's 50-50. But let's say if I have any groups here, which I'm cir circling in purple, right, that are optically active or with a chiral center, yeah, then uh, the bromide will not approach the carbocationic carbon with near equal probability. Uh, the reason, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to elaborate over here, but... Um, just ensure that you are aware that if the two groups are not, um, I mean, they are, if they have a chiral center on their own, or even a, even let's say this is not a H, it's something else with a chiral center, then uh, the bromide is not likely to approach the carbocationic carbon, or you can say that it's carbon bearing the positive charge with near equal probability. Okay, uh, it has got to do with transition state theory, which is not elaborated in H2. And because it's going to approach, in, in our case here, the bromide is approaching the carbocationic carbon uh, with near equal probability. I'm going to end up with a racemic mixture. Okay, so the racemic mixture uh, will cause Y to not be optically active because the plane polarized light will rotate in both directions and uh, the rotation will cancel each other out. Okay, so that will be the explanation we have for Y. Okay, and then we have a part Z here asking you to draw the carbocation leading to the respective products. Uh, this will be relatively straightforward because we have done the above. So uh, for X, it will be the primary carbocation. Okay, so this will be the primary carbocation. For Y, it will be the secondary carbocation. And for Z, interestingly, is actually the tertiary carbocation. So in terms of uh, stability, this will be the most stable, followed by the secondary, followed by the primary. Some of you might be wondering, uh, how is it possible to get the carbocation Z? Okay, so I'm going to roughly explain. Uh, how do I get Z? So basically, uh, this particular carbocation, I'm going to just circle it in black, is secondary, right? 
But the secondary carbon cation is actually not the most stable because potentially there is a little edge here, okay, uh, which is not drawn, and it can undergo what you call a hydride shift. So when the edge gets shifted to the secondary, to I mean to attack or to form a bond with the uh, carbon bearing the positive charge, in this case the secondary carbon, right? In this way, you will actually form what we call a tertiary carbocation. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm going to draw the H here in orange. And then the new carbocation form is actually tertiary. Okay, so this is known as hydride shift. Yeah, Hydride shift is quite common in carbocation chemistry. Uh, the driving force, of course, is the formation of the uh, more stable carbocation. Okay, yeah. So that's how uh, I can potentially get Z because the tertiary carbocation is formed and then uh, the bromide will then undergo nucleophilic attack uh, at the tertiary carbocation giving Z. Okay, so the last part uh, is an MCQ which compound will not be produced when 3 methyl built one in is added to a solution containing aqueous bromine and sodium chloride. Okay, so um, I think that first of all, we, we must be comfortable in knowing what is the electrophile present. Okay, so the electrophile present is actually bromine. Okay, so um, you would expect the first step, which is electrophilic addition uh, to involve the nucleophilic attack on a pi bond on the electron diffusion uh, bromine, which is being polarized by the pi electron clocks. And this particular uh, fast, I mean, sorry, slow steps will generate this carbocation, which is secondary. Okay, so I think the first thing we need to realize is that the Br must be bonded to the first carbon, the carbon right at the end. So this will be correct, correct, correct. Uh, this will be impossible, okay, because there's no Br there. So straight away, option D is gone. Okay, and then we need to identify the potential nucleophile present. So the potential nucleophile present in the system will be the bromides. Okay, so if the bromide attacks the carbocation, we will get B. Okay, um, there is also water here. So if water attacks the carbocation and then the H plus gets eliminated, we'll get A. Okay, and then the final carbocation, sorry, the final nucleophile present is actually the chloride anion here. Yeah, so chloride anion is the nucleophile. So if the chloride anion attacks the carbocation, we'll get C. Okay, so A, B, C are likely to be produced and then we straight away cross D out. Yeah, because... Um, in the first instance, we know that um, B will be an impossible product. So therefore, the option will be B. Yeah. So yes, we can answer the question right at the beginning, but we choose to go through them step by step uh, in order to understand the chemistry a little bit more. Okay, so that will be the end of in-class exercise 1. Uh, please look out for uh, the other video on exercise 2.